welcome to um, About Face Theatre presents Five Questions With, and today our guest is actor Ewan Bremner. Now, uh, Ewan is an actor whose extensive screen credits range from train spotting to Wonder Woman, and whose theatre work includes performances in productions at The Bush, uh, The Donmar Warehouse, and The Royal Court, among others. Uh, Ewan, you're very welcome. Hello there. Uh, really good to meet you, and, and uh, thanks for yeah. having me. Oh, our pleasure, our pleasure. So we're just going to dive right in. So your first question, Ewan, is just to, um, what play or experience first got you into theatre? Uh, well, I was involved in youth theatres when I was a kid, from about the age of, I, I guess, around even, well, yeah, maybe 10 years old or something. Um, so, yeah, I, I uh, was exposed to quite a lot of, you know, theatrical stuff, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, whether it's like sketches, a lot of community theatre and a lot of um, kind of visiting theatre companies like 784 and uh, Borderline Theatre where I was going up, Communicado, Jerry Mulgrew. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so I was, this was the, in the 80s uh, with, um, you know, when Thatcherism was just, uh, looming and, and um, starting to sort of decimate a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, the cultural industry and also like, the, you know, a lot of this idea of social, social, uh, mem you know, membership of society and, and social integration and you know, responsibility and stuff. So uh, a lot of what I was seeing was influenced, you know, was very much influenced by that at the time of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I guess, to answer your question, the first play that I saw that made me feel like, oh my God, <laughs> I, this is really powerful. Theatre mm -hmm. is a powerful thing, was a play that I saw on television. There's a, a mm -hmm. Harpenter play called uh, The Dumb Waiter. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was, must have been, uh, BBC Two Play for Today or something or yeah. Playhouse or whatever that whatever that series was that they had. You know, I was seeing I had been seeing a lot of theatre outside of that, but this yeah. the first play that made me feel like, oh my mm -hmm. god, this is really theatre has power uh, was oh. and it, it made the hairs of my neck stand up and it made me yeah. kind of feel like oh, <laughs> what's going to happen um, and why are they talking like this. And <laughs> Yeah, it felt it felt deep, you know. That was yeah. Yeah, the dumb waiter, I guess. But oh, it was really? television. It wasn't like it wasn't live theater, you know. So yeah, but it yeah. sounds like you still had a similar experience, like the the experience to it, which is interesting. Yeah. That that with the hair standing on the back of your neck, that to me is very like a live theater like yes. experience. Mm. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Oh. Yeah. Great. So, um, so obviously, um, Pinter had a big impression on you, but. Um, for our second question, what's a, a great play that you love and why? Oh, uh, I mean, there's lots. I mean, I think, I think theatre is uh, really an attempt at, at communicating something, and it's uh, it's always an attempt. And it's great theatre is ambitious as well. Mm. I've seen brilliant, ambitious productions that really satisfy and really mm. uh, make me feel like I've learned something more about what it is to be alive, mm. or, you know, by the time I leave the theatre. Um, but um, uh, I also, like, uh, I appreciate... So, so for example... The classic play for me that I really love is Waiting for Godot, but mm. I don't feel like I've ever seen a production of it that didn't disappoint me. Ah, it was yeah. like this great, impossible play. Like, <laughs> I'd be terrified if I ever had to do it, but I love it <laughs> so much. You know, yeah. Yeah. to read it and the language of it, I, I completely love, but I never feel like uh, satisfied when when I see the play and I've seen quite a lot of productions of it, mm. it always feels like something's getting away, you know, something is running away. So maybe it's not a great play. Maybe it's a terrible play. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but, that, but I love it. You know, I, there's something in it and I, and I don't know 
uh, it probably run around in circles trying to articulate mm. you know what the magic of it is for me but um mm. yeah I, I stick with that play you know and then there's lots of plays that are uh similarly ambitious and maybe don't quite work or you know there's there's a there's an actor uh who you'll know very well, I'm sure, um, Michael Shannon, an mm. American actor, who's, who's a big movie star and he's, and he's a wonderful actor and I've known him for a long time, but um, he, uh, uh, he is hands down my favorite theater actor, like and, mm. you know, on stage, I, I don't think anyone can touch him. Um, mm. I mean, that's, that's not completely fair in terms of the, like UK, there's some, there are some amazing UK Mm. Uh, stage actors I mean that I just you know are incredible but in America in America I think no one no one can touch Mike Shannon like he's, mm. he's I go see every pretty much everything he does like yeah. mm. I remember I first saw him doing Killer Joe at the Bush uh, mm. Bush Theatre tiny little in a tiny studio theatre above a pub in mm. Shepherd's Bush about um God, I don't know how many years ago. Now. <laughs> a few years <laughs> early ago. 90s, early 90s. I can't add up that many. Yeah, numbers, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and that, in terms of being a satisfying piece of theatre, was really so exciting mm. in the small space. And I saw it in the bigger space. I've toured around. And I saw it in the bigger space in London. And I was like, oh, my God, it's terrible. And then I saw it in, <laughs> like, uh, you know, and I'm doing it in New York. And, and uh, it was kind of not really as... Ah, you know, never had that same kind of uh, impact on me. But I think, mm. yeah, Tracy Letts wrote that killer Joe, and yeah, he's, he's astounding. You know, he's, he's, yeah, he's a, we love we love his work. He's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. Cool. Well, so um, taking a little bit off of that, and about you know. You, you know, having expectations, right? So you had these different expectations going to see the, the same play. Have you ever had an experience in theater where um, what ended up happening or what ended up um, being presented was very different from what you had expected? Uh, been involved in a production. Yeah, yeah, for yourself, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, sure. I mean, and and that's... That's uh, a good thing a lot of the time. I mean, most productions mm. wind up being something different from what you were guessing at before you started. <laughs> I think it was going to be. But there was one um, very formative experience that jumps to mind just now I was working with uh, David Glass's company, which was uh, called the David Glass Mime Ensemble in the early 90s, I think. And um, we we were doing a production of Gormenghast, the Nervin mm -hmm. Peak novels, and and uh, and so we were playing all these characters. But it was it was very physical theatre, and it was very influenced by uh, many different styles of theatre, including uh, commedia, and also including no theatre, uh, Japanese oh, yeah. no theatre, and uh, and kabuki, kabuki theatre um, as well. Like so, we were using a lot of sticks to kind of create sets, you know, like mm -hmm. they were just, uh, you know, to suggest the, set, the setting, you know, like, yeah, yeah. You know, so, um, and we had, you know, these amazing costumes, so heavy, big robes, and I was playing the King Titus, and I was also playing his son, uh, huh. uh, tight, uh, young Titus, Titus Cron. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, it was a, it was hugely uh, ambitious production, and and it went down great in London when we did it at the Lyric Theatre. But we then did a tour uh, uh, to South America, and I, the whole time through the London production, I felt like I was just wasn't getting it. I just felt like I'm not uh, I'm not doing this right. I'm not. Mm. I'm not. And the company was a mime ensemble. It was called a mime ensemble. It wasn't mime. Mm -hmm. Although there was a lot of that physical uh, work, and David yeah. Glass is just just a wonderful uh, mind. I mean, he's just he's some, an amazing artist, mm -hmm. uh, and his ensemble had been running for years. With, and this was the third production that I, that I was dropping into on this production, and 
it was very important to be a member of the ensemble, uh, to, to have good ensemble, which was which we mm. were indoctrinated with this idea of good ensemble, <laughs> yeah. uh, which I, I completely respect and I completely agree with. Mm. But the whole time it was a sort of paranoia that oh, I'm not being good ensemble. How do I be good ensemble? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, the reason that play is not working is probably because I'm I'm not being. I, it's probably I, I just. I can't be a good ensemble and I can't make the character work and, and I can't, mm. don't know what to do. And, and uh, the whole time I was, and I think, I think quite a lot of us in the, in the company were paranoid about this concept, you know, of being good ensemble. And half of the cast were new and half of the cast had been doing it for several productions. So we all felt kind of a bit out of our depth. And yeah. by the time we got to South America, I was such, having such a miserable time doing the play. Um, mm. Really, I just thought, I, I don't know what to do. I can't, it's something, it just doesn't feel right. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting it. I'm not, I'm not able to kind of make these scenes work. I'm not being this character properly or either of these characters properly. I don't know what to do. I, my life is terrible. I just, why, why am I, why the, I think I could be an actor. I can't, I'm just, this is just a really, I, this is just really a nightmare and terrible. And anyway, <laughs> so we've been doing it uh, on tour in Peru and Ecuador and we were in Brazil and Sao wow. Paulo and uh, we had like a run of a week there and I'd just come to the end of my tether after doing this show for months I just felt like there's no, there's no point in me having a miserable time if I'm going to be mm-hmm. doing this I've, I, I need to just find a way to enjoy it. Otherwise, it's just no mm. point. Mm. Yeah. It's just hell. It's just hell and misery. Mm. And um, I realized at the same time, I was really scared of this idea of good ensemble and not being good ensemble. I'm just yeah. kind of terrified of, you know, it's the idea, you know, everybody has. You don't want to let somebody down, or it's, mm. a, you know, it's a really important thing. You know? So, this sort of spectre was hanging over me. And, and that, I, I was so miserable that I just thought, F it. I don't care about good ensemble. I don't care about, uh, you know, trying to be something that I'm not. And, and as soon as I let go of that, mm. everything fell into place. <sighs> like, it was really amazing experience because everything fell into place. The play just seemed to work and be really enjoyable. And, oh. and uh, if I hadn't reached that breaking point, mm. I would never have learned that, you know, you can hold on to something so tight mm. it can be actually the thing that's the obstacle to you actually, you know, making you the best of, huh. you know, what, what you have, you know, and, and, and it was good on some, it was, yeah, yeah, good yeah. On some, but it was without the fear of like, <sighs> um, I am totally so, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So that was a lesson, but it, I really had to reach breaking point uh, to kind of, to learn that, you know, and to experience that. And it was, sho- it was shocking. I didn't expect that that was what was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Kind, of, kind of, in a way, just sort of gave up and thought, I can't do this. I'm, yeah. you know, so stop trying. And yeah. then, Wow, it was just a thrill, a pleasure. It was, and the show went down a bomb. You know, just that's amazing. That's so great. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, you and um, theater. What, <laughs> what keeps you coming back to it? What What moves you? What excites you about it? You, well, you've worked in many forms, and, and you continue to work in a lot of different media. So, why theater? Well, I honestly feel like, honestly, genuinely feel that everything is theater. Everything. Mm-hmm in life is theater, you know, it's not just, it's not just uh, humans that put on a show, you know, animals dramatize, dramatize things in order to achieve something or in order to show something or demonstrate something. And, uh, you know, wherever we go, we can't, we can't help but uh, either consciously be acting uh, or, or unconsciously be acting. And, and <laughs> And so for me, like theater isn't something that happens on the stage. Uh, mm. uh, that's something to that be consciously make, you know, to, to present something. And, and I love that. But um, we cannot escape theater. It's, mm. it's, 
something that we're uh, bound to, like all, you know, everything that lives. You know? So, um, if it, even if I didn't want to, <laughs> even if I wanted to escape it, I, I, think, I think it's good to sort of be conscious of like, uh, you know, the joy of making theatre and the joy of making something and what, what is it that you want to communicate and what, you know, to be part of something that is making that attempt. I think the attempt to communicate mm. is really noble, you know, and mm. that, that's what theatre is doing. It has, it's, it's attempting to share experience and, mm. and I think that's a really uh, great ambition, you know, so uh, I don't know. Film is theatre, television yeah. is theatre, real life is theatre, you know, mm. whether you like it or not, it's, it's, it's got you by the teeth, so <laughs> yeah. I love that. So there's no escape. Yeah, no escape. That's great. Well, it's funny too because our, our uh, the the last question I was going to ask you, which kind of is is completely related to what you just said, and that you, you can't escape it, that it's everywhere. But um, is is there a skill, a particular skill that you maybe developed? I don't know in your youth theater days, or th you know, through throughout the stages that you've been on, that you have found is a good lesson for life or something that you can then use in life. I mean, even listening to you there, the letting go, being able to let go, mm -hmm. like that to me is a lesson <laughs> that I've learned uh -huh. for, for life as well, you know? Right, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I'd say the concept of, uh, a concept of professionalism mm. was something that I learned at a young age in youth theatre and you know you don't always live up to your ideals and yeah. other people's ideals but um, that concept of professionalism and uh, the idea of being in service of something uh, mm -hmm. something that you know I probably wrestled with the idea of being in service of something because I'm an individual you know, when I was growing up, you know, like I'm an individual and I want to, but, but why should I be in service of something? But um, that the principles of professionalism um, and res our respect, you know, it's mm -hmm. the, the number one thing about uh, what's called professionalism is respect. Um, so that you're not better than the material that you're reading this play. You're not better than the audience. Mm. You know, you you're not uh, the interesting thing here. <laughs> not, the interesting thing here is not you. You know, and and it's in, it's in service of something. So what is it you're putting yourself in service of? Mm. Like, don't um, don't let it be for nothing. You know. Um, so, like those those kind of ideas are something that I feel uh, grateful for having to wrestle with, and and you know, you know, ideals ideals and ideas that were thrown at me, you know, when I was mm -hmm. growing up, and I had to explore and had to question and had to like come to some sort of understanding of, and and I feel that's really helped me in, in all kinds of areas of my life, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's very terrific. cool. Wonderful. Well, thank you. And that's great. Um, and so just uh, as a bonus question, um, <laughs> what are you working on at the moment here? Uh, a few things, but um, and in, in an hour, I'm going to go teach an online class, an acting class uh, on oh, Zoom, nice. which is like a weekly class that starts today. Um, I'm doing through a company called The Leap, The Leap Acting. Uh, and... So there's the students internationally in the States and, and elsewhere hmm. uh, that, um, that are going to be uh, work, working with me. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's a class called Character in Self. Mm -hmm. So I'm ex exploring the ideas of, you know, or exploring the questions of like, what is character? How is it revealed? Mm -hmm. um, the problems of acting like uh you know how do we overcome these obstacles that are inherent in uh. being an actor acting making a scene work how do we uh 
how do we overcome those obstacles and how do we get the maximum uh, value out of you know, the opportunity that we're afforded. So that's, um, yeah, character and self starts today and that will run for probably the next couple of months and beyond. But um, yeah, so we're doing that. And then I'm also directing tonight uh, some actors in Colombia and Bogota and in New York on <laughs> Middleton's Bluefish Project, which um, this is, it was a live production that Anna Nugent here was stage <laughs> managing um, in the summer. Uh, we did it as a live film, and this this production uh, is being developed into a feature film, mm. which uh, we're almost finished shooting um, remotely in all these different parts of the world, in Denmark, South Africa, amazing. Uh, London. Um, it's an amazing, amazing visionary project by Clark Middleton, who sadly in the middle of our uh, film shoot passed away mm. to the virus. And so we're carrying on and he, it wasn't not coronavirus, he contracted West Nile virus, which was mm. uh, running right in LA. Uh, or in the same time as the, the pandemic and yeah. so we're carrying on in his name uh almost almost finished shooting and Beautiful. the production starts soon mm, that's, yeah. that's great that's so amazing that you get to carry it on and carry on clark's legacy in that way that's really yeah. they want yes to yeah you know he feels very close you know it's all yeah. it's all uh he was, he was a really incredibly fiercely compassionate man and uh um and it's, it's a very compassionate, funny, tragic piece that yeah. he's made. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Beautiful. Well, Ewan, thank you so much for being with us. It's such a joy. And we'll definitely share um, any links for the class. Um, Wonderful. Can people still join or? Yes, still they can. Yeah, okay. there's still some places available um, over this next couple of weeks or so that okay. should, should fill up. But there, yeah, there's still a few places available. So, um yeah it's, it's for anybody any any ability uh, and yeah uh, Love it. great great talking to you thank you yeah such a joy thank you so much pleasure you all right cheers bye 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 and i just wanted to say thank you so much for being with us uh, our audience and we look very much to forward to seeing you again at about face theater presents five questions with Dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.